Are you an entrepreneur, a creative, or do you plan on starting a business soon? Well, you don't want to miss this episode because we're going to be discussing common intellectual property misconceptions that are ruining businesses. Welcome to the Everything Intellectual Property Law Podcast. I'm your host, Dibata Nasir Adeola Shubambi. I'm a lawyer, content creator, an intellectual property and technology enthusiast, and I would also like to consider myself, well, a creative at heart. I found a way to combine my interests to create and produce the foremost intellectual property and technology law podcast in Nigeria. The EIP Law Podcast is dedicated towards helping you identify, protect, and leverage your most important asset. This is why in today's episode, we're going to be discussing some common misconceptions startups should avoid in their approach to IP. I believe this will give us a better understanding of how IP can create value for small businesses. And when I say value, I mean gaining competitive advantage, which will ultimately result in increased revenue for businesses. So with that said, the first common mistake or misconception I'll be addressing is the assumption that businesses don't have intellectual property. This can't be farther from the truth because every business, no matter how small, will always have an intangible asset or intellectual property of its own. For example, let's talk about business branding such as your company's name and logo or product name. These are all valuable intangible assets that need protection because they serve as unique identifiers that distinguish a business from its competitors. Usually, a company's name or product name is the first interaction a consumer has with the brand. And like I said, it helps differentiate your business from other competitors in the market. You'll agree that there are some very popular companies out there that when you hear their names, it already tells you everything you need to know about who they are and what they do. If you hear the name Samsung anywhere in the world, you already know it's one of the best technology manufacturers in the market. And they are known for producing high quality Android phones and other gadgets. So if you see a Samsung branded phone anywhere, you will have a certain perception and expectation of that Samsung product or phone. Sometimes consumers buy products because of the particular reputation that is attached to the brand. So the brand names are very powerful intangible assets that need protection. Apart from company names, even your customer list can be categorized as trade secrets, which are recognized IP rights that can be protected. Also, your company slogans, yes, your company slogans can be protected through trademarks. I'm sure we all know one or two unique and distinctive slogans that we typically associate with certain brands. For example, we usually associate the Nike sportswear brand with its infamous, uniquely designed tick logo and its catchy slogan, Just Do It. The Nike Just Do It slogan is used in many, if not all, of their viral advertisement campaigns and it is arguably one of Nike's key brand identifiers. So once you see the tick logo design or the just do it slogan, even without seeing the name, you already know that this is a product that is associated with the Nike brand. Another example will be the MTN slogan, everywhere you go, or Red Bulls, it gives you wings, or LG, life is good, or Pick Milk, it's in you. I can go on and on, but I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. All these slogans that I have just mentioned are very unique and distinctive slogans that have been protected by the brands as well. To sum it all up, your company's name, logo or customer list and even slogans form part of intellectual properties of your business that needs protection. So before I go any further in today's discussion, I just want to clarify that the words IP, intellectual property and tangible assets will be used interchangeably throughout today's episode. So don't be confused when you hear me use either of those words. IP is just an abbreviation for intellectual property while intangible assets are basically non-physical assets. So the next misconception I'll be addressing is the belief that IP only deals with trademarks, copyrights, and patents. This limited understanding of intellectual property can be very problematic for your business because you'll be unable to adequately identify the IP of your business and how best to protect it. So the issue here is that most people believe that IP only deals with trademarks, copyrights, and patents, which isn't true. Intellectual property goes beyond the basic understanding of copyrights, patents, and trademarks that most people are accustomed to. 
There are other forms of IP rights that most people aren't aware of, such as industrial design, related rights, geographical indications, trade secrets, and many more. Even beyond that, IP can manifest in your everyday business arrangements, which may expose the IP of your company to further risk. In situations where a business has to share business ideas with another party for funding or to enter into an independent contractor's agreement or employment agreement, the company's IP can be exposed to risk in such situations even without knowing. A typical example of this is a work for hire agreement to design a logo for your company. Especially where a proper agreement is absent, the contractor, not the business, owns the contracted work and can in the future lay claims to the logo even if the contractor was paid for the logo design. The fact that money was paid to the contractor to design the logo does not guarantee the company ownership of the logo at all. And this can be particularly difficult for startups and small businesses, especially if they have started gaining recognition with their brand's logo because they might have to change their logo or risk infringement. Which brings me to the next misconception I'll be addressing, having inadequate documentation. Like I mentioned earlier, in normal business operations, entrepreneurs or business owners will find them themselves in situations where they have to share business ideas with outsiders or outsource business functions which typically exposes the company's IP to risk. So it's very important for businesses to have proper documentation in order to mitigate those risks and protect their IP rights. For instance, having a non-disclosure agreement helps to enforce business confidentiality controls, especially when businesses are entering into independent contract agreements or work for hire agreements, it's important to implement appropriate confidentiality controls and the outcome of ignoring such reasonable controls can be very detrimental to the business in the long run. Now to the final point, failing to invest in an IP council to develop and implement an IP strategy for your business. Oh my god, I cannot overemphasize this point. In my opinion, this is the biggest mistake any startup can make. The failure to develop or execute a well thought out IP strategy can be very fatal for startups. With the help of an IP council in creating an effective IP strategy for your business, a startup becomes an attractive option for investors looking to fund a well coordinated venture due to the mitigated risk of counterfeiting and the competitive advantage of protected innovation. It is not uncommon for small businesses and startups to create plans and strategies for business development, marketing, and capital investment. However, when it comes to IP strategies, you find that these companies will ignore a plan to protect their company's most valuable assets. I'm aware of the fact that most startups try to minimize spending because of their limited funds. However, the cost in procuring an IP council is most times insignificant in comparison to the amount spent on needless litigation or negotiations that could have been avoided. So trust me, the last thing a young business needs is spending time and scarce resources on issues that could have been avoided by implementing reasonable IP strategies from the onset. So engaging a qualified IP council to create an IP strategy is crucial to the success of your business. For example, where investors are looking to invest in a company, they request for the company's IP portfolio. Investors usually consider IP as a competitive advantage against competitors. If businesses are not challenged towards IP, they might likely miss out on a golden opportunity to grow their business. We've come to the end of today's episode. Thank you for listening. I hope today's topic has provided valuable insights to small businesses or startups in their approach to IP. If you enjoyed today's episode and you want to join the conversation, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, YouTube, and Google Podcast. For more updates, please visit our website at everythingiplaw.com or you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at everythingiplaw. Till next time, bye.